Welcome to today's dive into the fascinating world of our perception of time. Have you ever wondered why time flies when you're having fun, but crawls when you're waiting in line? Today, we're going to explore the psychological and physiological factors that influence how we experience time. By the end of this video, you'll have a deeper understanding of why our sense of time can vary so drastically and how this affects our daily lives. So, buckle up as we embark on this temporal journey together. In the vast tapestry of the cosmos, whispered among the stars, and held sacred by the universe's most enlightened civilizations, there lies a legend. This tale, handed down through countless generations, speaks of the star whale, a being of such immense power that it can consume solar systems whole with a mere opening of its cosmic maw. A single, mighty flick of its fluke has the power to obliterate civilizations, leaving nothing but cosmic dust in its wake. The ancient libraries, the keepers of the universe's oldest secrets, house venerable tomes adorned with illustrations of this celestial leviathan. These drawings, stitched together from hushed rumors and shadowed whispers, depict a creature whose leathery hide is adorned with barnacles made of pure starlight. Its gargantuan baleen plates are dusted with the remnants of interplanetary plankton, collected over billions of years. Yet to the star whale, these eons pass in the blink of an eye. For this cosmic wanderer moves at velocities nearing the speed of light, a realm where time warps and bends around its massive form. In the eyes of the star whale, the entirety of the universe's 13.8 billion year history unfolds in less than a heartbeat. To this magnificent creature, the concept of now is but a fleeting illusion, making our entire human history seem as transient as a single ephemeral spark in the vast dark sea of the cosmos. In the vast expanse of the universe, where time stretches and folds in ways beyond human comprehension, every fleeting moment of our existence, every war fought, every invention crafted, every love lost, and every child's laughter evaporates before it can even be perceived by the senses of the cosmic behemoth, the star whale. This narrative invites us to dive deep into the story of this majestic entity, unraveling the enigmatic nature of now, which proves to be not just a mystery, but also a matter of perspective. It's a journey that reveals how time's relative nature affects all beings, not just those of mythical proportions. Consider a moment on Earth, far removed from the cosmic wanderings of intergalactic leviathans. A car speeds towards a flock of pigeons on a bustling road. To the casual observer, it appears as though the birds are blissfully unaware of the impending peril, doomed to become mere stains on the asphalt. Yet, in the nick of time, they scatter skywards, escaping the clutches of disaster. The question arises, why do they wait until the last possible moment to flee? The answer lies not in a shared thrill seeking among pigeons, but in the fundamental differences in how species perceive time. Pigeons experience the world at a breathtaking pace of over 100 frames per second, far surpassing the 25 to 30 frames per second that shape human perception through film. This rapid processing allows them to navigate the dangers of fast-moving predators and cars with seeming ease. For them, the world unfolds in a slow-motion ballet, granting them more time to react than we can fathom. This incident serves as a vivid illustration that now is a fluid concept, stretching and compressing across the spectrum of life on Earth and beyond. The duration of now varies vastly depending on one's evolutionary path, the activities one undertakes, and, as the star whale exemplifies, the scale at which one exists within the cosmos. In the cosmic dance of the star whale, where the very fabric of time stretches and contracts, we encounter the bewildering reality that speed and motion can warp the sequence of events. It's a realm where the concept of now becomes so malleable that two individuals might perceive the unfolding of moments in entirely different sequences. This serves as a stark reminder. Our human instincts are mere whispers against the thunderous roar of the universe's true nature. As we voyage alongside the star whale through the vast, 
uncharted expanses of the universe, witnessing eons pass in mere moments, we're confronted with a profound enigma. What is now? Does this fleeting moment hold any reality beyond the confines of our consciousness? The tale takes a turn towards the terrestrial on a day marked by collective anticipation and wonder Christmas Day, 2021. Eyes across the globe turned skyward as the James Webb Space Telescope embarked on its journey into the cosmos. Six months into its voyage, it began transmitting back to Earth images of staggering clarity and depth, unveiling the universe as never seen before. This journey through space and time, sponsored by the innovative display metal posters, allows us to adorn our walls with the celestial majesty of the universe. From the reimagined pillars of creation to the farthest reaches of space, these magnetic posters transform our living spaces into galleries of cosmic wonder in under 20 seconds without leaving a trace upon removal. Whatever your passion be, it's cinema, gaming, comics, nature, or music display offers a window into worlds both vast and varied, inviting us to marvel at the universe's grandeur from the comfort of our homes. Dive into the mesmerizing world where the realms of real-world science and the imaginative expanses of science fiction lock a special discount. Enjoy 22% off your purchase of up to two displays. And for those looking to bring more of the cosmos into their home, a 33% discount awaits on orders of three or more. It's Displate's way of championing educational content across YouTube, allowing you to decorate your space with the wonders of the universe. But what does space itself taste like? As stars dance in the cosmic void and the fabric of time stretches around the gravitational pull of Sagittarius AE, the colossal black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy, we venture close to the heart of darkness, just 390 light years from this behemoth. A mere whisper in the vastness of space lies the intriguing expanse of Sagittarius B2, a massive cloud of gas and dust that has captured the imaginations of astronomers across the globe. Engrossed in its ancient light, they search for clues hidden within its folds, uncovering a recipe of cosmic proportions among the celestial ingredients. Within the vast, enigmatic expanse of space, amidst clouds of gas and dust, lies a molecule known as ethyl formate. Though it may sound like a stranger to the ears, it's the very essence that gifts raspberries with their vibrant flavor. This revelation propels us into a cosmic culinary inquiry. What does space taste like? Are there celestial delicacies that the star whale favors above all? And beyond taste, what aromas drift through the cosmic void? It turns out, Ethyl formate not only tantalizes the taste buds, but also carries the scent of rum, weaving a fascinating link between the cosmos and earthly delights. This interstellar intrigue extends to the realm of human creativity, inspiring a Kickstarter campaign that successfully garnered over half a million dollars to bring the universe's unique fragrance to Earth. Dubbed Dodir de Space, this perfume aims to encapsulate astronauts' descriptions of space's scent evoking images of burnt steak, overcooked cakes, discharged firearms, and the intense heat of welding metal. This venture into the olfactory essence of the cosmos underscores our enduring fascination with the unknown. As we ponder the dietary habits and olfactory preferences of celestial beings like the star whale, it's a poignant reminder of the shared biology that binds us to even the most fantastical creatures. Our senses, much like theirs, serve as the lens through which we interpret the vast tapestry of existence. This shared sensory experience frames our understanding of time and space, influencing our perception of the present moment. In the grand dining room of the universe, you find yourself an observer of a meticulously choreographed spectacle, a waiter dressed in the classic elegance of a penguin suit, gracefully ushers a guest to their seat, while the sommelier animatedly extols the virtues of a fine Bordeaux from an impressively curated wine list. Against this backdrop of white tablecloths and whispered anticipations, the universe's mysteries unfurl, inviting us to ponder the flavors, scents, and fleeting moments that define our cosmic journey as you sit, 
enveloped in an ambience where elegance and sophistication merge. The dining experience before you transcends mere eating. The cutlery in your hand feels substantial, a testament to quality, while the glassware sparkles with the promise of affluence. The arrival of your first course is nothing short of a ceremonial presentation, a culinary creation born of a symphony of chefs whose creativity rivals that of history's most revered artists. With the first bite, a cascade of endorphins floods your senses, ushering in your inaugural encounter with Michelin-starred cuisine. Suddenly, the accolades and reverence surrounding such culinary achievements become crystal clear. Yet, this moment of epiphany is not as instantaneous as it seems. From the moment the flavors touch your tongue, a complex process unfolds. Your taste buds awaken to the symphony of salty, sweet, sour, bitter, and umami, sending signals speeding along your cranial nerves towards the brainstem, and from there, journeying to the thalamus. This cerebral relay race continues as the signals reach the gustatory cortex nestled deep within your brain and no larger than a grain of rice. It is here, in this diminutive command center, that the essence of taste is meticulously decoded, akin to a spy unraveling the secrets of a coded message. This intricate journey through your nervous system, however, is not without its temporal demands. A 2012 study led by Catherine Ola reveals that the brain registers the taste approximately 100 milliseconds after the food makes contact with your tongue. Thus, what you perceive as an immediate burst of flavor is, in reality, a finely delayed orchestration of sensation, a slice of time, savored and dissected in the confines of your mind. When you savor that exquisite bite, you're actually tasting a ghost of the past, not the present moment. The intricate dance of flavors becomes even more complex when you consider that not all tastes arrive at your consciousness simultaneously. Research indicates that sweetness often edges out saltiness in the race to your brain, presenting you with a staggered mosaic of culinary nows. This jumble of temporal layers isn't limited to taste alone. It extends to all five senses. Consider the moment you picked up your cutlery, appreciating its heft. Those tactile signals embarked on a journey from your fingertips all the way to your brain. In an astonishing experiment in 2022, scientists at Caltech harnessed a camera capable of capturing an astounding 70 trillion frames per second to observe electrical impulses as they sped through neurons at varying velocities. This technology, echoing methods used by astronomers to detect gravitational waves from cosmic collisions, revealed that touch sensations sprint to the brain at approximately 75 meters per second. That's swifter than the fastest roller coaster yet, trailing behind the breathtaking dive speed of the Peregrine Falcon, the champion of the animal kingdom. But even once these signals arrive, your brain still requires a moment to interpret them. This means that by the time you consciously recognize the sensation of the knife's handle in your grasp, that initial contact has already been history for over 100 milliseconds. Once more, your senses are tuned not to the immediate, but to echoes of interactions already past, weaving the continuous illusion of a seamless present. Your journey through the sensory past doesn't end with taste and touch. It extends to the realm of scent, introducing yet another layer of temporal distance. Before the canap even touched your lips, its aroma promised a delightful experience. This scent, a ballet of tiny molecules, detached from the food and danced through the air to your nostrils. There, it met an ensemble of nearly 400 olfactory receptors, each receptor transforming the chemical message into a neural impulse, then expedited directly to your brain. But how swift is the journey of a scent? The speed at which smells travel is a nuanced affair influenced by a plethora of factors such as the food's temperature, its nature, the room's ambience, and even the direction of air currents. Generally, the sense speed falls within a few hundred meters per second, translating to hundreds of milliseconds from the moment the aroma leaves the food to when it stirs awareness in your brain. Thus, what you're inhaling is not the present aroma, but a lingering memory of what once was. 
As you anticipate the next course, the ambience shifts dramatically. The sky outside the window darkens ominously, and suddenly, a lightning bolt cleaves the sky, its brilliance momentarily illuminating the dining room. Moments later, the thunder follows, a deep rumble that reverberates through the space, subtly altering the dining experience. This delay between the lightning's flash and the thunder's roar is yet another example of how our senses are perpetually catching up to reality, placing us not in the immediate now, but in a constantly unfolding narrative of just past moments. The tranquil ambience of the dining room is momentarily disturbed by nature's dramatic display. It's a fascinating fact that light travels a staggering distance of one kilometer in just three microseconds, while sound lumbers along, taking three full seconds to cover the same stretch. This disparity allows us to gauge our distance from the storm's heart with a simple method by counting the seconds that elapse between the lightning's flash and the thunder's rumble. Each second of delay translates to approximately 330 meters, offering a rough measure of how far away the storm is. Yet, whether it's the visual spectacle of lightning or the resonant boom of thunder, what we're experiencing is not the storm as it unfolds in the present. Instead, we're witnesses to a storm that has already passed. The greater the distance, the deeper we delve into the past with our observations. Our eyes and ears, in essence, act as time machines, bridging the gap between the then and the now. Consider the everyday act of gazing into a mirror. For your reflection to meet your gaze, light must first touch your face, travel to the mirror, and then bounce back into your eyes. This journey means that the image you see is not your current self, but rather you from two nanoseconds ago. And even this is an understatement, for your brain takes additional time to process the image. So, in reality, when you look in the mirror, you're catching a glimpse of yourself from slightly further in the past than those two nanoseconds suggest. This phenomenon underscores the ever-present delay in our sensory processing, revealing that our interaction with the world around us is always a reflection of a past moment however recent it may be. The journey of light from the world around us to the back of our retina, where it is transformed into the images we see, is a marvel of biology and physics. While a few fractions of a second might not seem to significantly alter our perception of ourselves in a mirror, the implications of light's travel time become staggering when we consider greater distances, especially those on a cosmic scale. Take, for example, our lunar neighbor, the Moon orbits our planet at an average distance of 384,000 kilometers, making it approximately 1.3 light seconds away. This means that when we admire the Moon's full brilliance on a clear night, we're actually witnessing it as it was 1.3 seconds in the past. The phenomenon becomes even more fascinating when we observe a half moon. In this phase, the Moon reveals a subtle detail. The darkened half is not completely obscured but faintly illuminated by a softer light. This dim glow is known as earth shine, sunlight that has bounced off the earth, traveled to the moon, and then reflected back to us. In observing this earth shine, we are essentially gazing into a vast celestial mirror. The light that reveals this softer lunar glow has made a round trip from the sun to the earth to the moon and back to our eyes. Through this incredible journey, we catch a glimpse of our planet as it was just over two and a half seconds ago. It's a profound reminder of the interconnectedness of our solar system and the delayed perception that comes with observing the cosmos. When we observe a half-lit moon, each half bathed in light represents moments from slightly different nows. The light that caresses the moon's surface is not just traveling from our Earth, but also carries the age of its journey from the sun taking a little over eight minutes to bridge the cosmic gap between the Sun and Earth. This means if the Sun were to vanish from existence, Earth would remain oblivious to its disappearance for those eight minutes, a curious thought experiment highlighting the light speed delay in cosmic events. This concept of delayed nose extends beyond our Moon, reaching out to the red sands of Mars. The average expanse separating Earth from Mars stretches to about 225 million kilometers, 
equivalent to a delay of approximately 12 and a half light minutes. Consider the tense moments of a Mars rover's descent as it penetrates the Martian atmosphere. A nerve-wracking seven-minute journey to the surface begins. By the time the mission control on Earth receives the initial signal indicating the start of the descent, the rover's fate, be it a successful landing or a catastrophic failure, is already sealed, unknown to the eager team back home. The challenge of delayed communication isn't just a hurdle for unmanned missions. Future astronauts charting a course to Mars will navigate this eerie time warp where an instantaneous cry for help or an urgent update will take over six minutes to reach Earth. Conversely, any guidance or emergency response from mission control will take an equal time to travel back to the astronauts. This time, delay underscores a profound isolation in space travel, where the concept of now stretches and bends, magnifying the distances between us not just in space, but in time. The reality of these interplanetary communications lays bare the stark challenges of exploring our solar system, where every moment is a dance with the immutable laws of physics and the unyielding speed of light. The challenge of aligning nose across the vast expanse of space is not just daunting. It's a matter of cosmic latency that could have critical implications. As we venture further into the solar system, the time delay in communication stretches from mere minutes to hours. Voyager 1, humanity's most distant envoy, edges ever closer to being a full light day away from Earth. When we gaze upon the stars that sprinkle the night sky, we're not witnessing them in their current state, but rather as they existed years, decades, or even centuries ago. Imagine finding a star that is as many light years away as you are old. The light that finally meets your eye has traversed the cosmos for the entirety of your life, offering you a glimpse of the star as it was in the very year you were born. The farthest star visible to the naked eye lies in the constellation Cassiopeia, known as V762 Cass. It's over 16,000 light years distant, meaning we see it as it was around the time when humans first formed bonds with domestic dogs. Now, consider the perspective reversed. A civilization orbiting V762 Ks would see our sun and solar system as they were 16,000 years ago. Through a telescope powerful enough, they might observe the echoes of our ancestors, specters from a time before the written word, unaware of the revolutions and transformations that have since shaped our world. This interstellar time capsule reveals the profound connection between light and time, allowing us to peer into the past while pondering who, in the distant future, might be gazing back at us. In the grand tapestry of the cosmos, the light carrying the tales of wars, groundbreaking inventions, and even YouTube videos races through the void at 300,000 kilometers per second. This relentless flow of information, a series of no's cascading through the cosmos at light speed, connects us to the universe in ways beyond imagination. V762 Cass in the constellation of Cassiopeia may hold the title for the farthest star visible to the naked eye, but it's hardly the most remote object that can be glimpsed without the aid of binoculars or telescopes. In a neighboring constellation, there lies a celestial phenomenon that appears as a soft, fuzzy patch, reminiscent of cotton wool. This is the Andromeda Galaxy, the Milky Way's nearest galactic neighbor. Though it may be described as near in cosmic terms, it resides at a staggering distance of approximately 2.5 million light years from us. To any hypothetical beings in Andromeda, Earth would be a glimpse into the distant past, a vision of our world as it was 2.5 million years ago, a time when our ancestors, such as Australopithecus, were first mastering the use of stone tools. An even more astonishing example of the past manifesting in our present comes from an unexpected source, the static on an old analog television. Among the black and white fuzz that fills the screen, Approximately 1% originates from the cosmic microwave background radiation, the universe's first light, emitted nearly 13.8 billion years ago. This reminds us that our senses, no matter how sharp, are always bound by the finite speed of light, forever translating the universe's ancient messages into our present now. 
Our perception of the immediate is intricately woven with delays, a continuous interplay between the light from bygone eras and the moment we perceive it, shaping our understanding of time and existence itself. In the vast expanse beyond the confines of our bodily senses, the notion of now becomes an even more elusive concept. Consider the star whale, a majestic creature of cosmic lore, soaring through the celestial ocean far above Earth, a concept as alien to it as the idea of a planet itself. Under the lens of Einstein's special theory of relativity, the star whale's near-light speed voyage compresses the billion-year tapestry of Earth's history into a mere flicker of time. According to this theory, as one approaches the speed of light, time dilates, stretching or compressing in response to the velocity of travel. In this relativistic dance, every traveler through the cosmos is allocated a budget equal to the speed of light. This budget can be allocated toward two dimensions, speed through space and progression through time. The more of this budget is allocated to speed, the less is available for time to elapse. For the star whale, moving at velocities that skirt the limits of light speed, its allocation toward temporal progression is minuscule. Earth's entire saga, from its fiery formation to the present day, is but a blink in its perception. Its experience of now is not a singular moment, but a vast continuum stretched across eons. This realization that there is no singular universal now shared among all entities casts a profound light on our understanding of existence. It underscores the subjectivity of time and challenges us to reconsider the significance of our daily moments. How do we reconcile our perception of the immediate, the now, with the cosmic ballet that unfolds on a scale beyond human comprehension? It invites us to ponder the fabric of reality itself, woven from the threads of time, space, and the speed at which we traverse them both. While the concept of relativity is most famously linked to Albert Einstein, its roots stretch back centuries to the 17th century and the pioneering work of Galileo Galilei. To grasp the essence of Galilean relativity, imagine a scene where a sailor stands on the deck of a moving ship. They place a golf ball on a tee, swing their club, and launch the ball forward where it eventually plunges into the ocean's embrace. Now, picture yourself standing on the shoreline, witnessing this event. Your perspective on the golf ball's velocity differs markedly from that of the sailor. From your vantage point on the shore, the ball was already traveling at the ship's speed before the club ever made contact. The sailor's swing only adds to the ball's velocity. Conversely, for the sailor, who shares the ship's velocity, the ball seems to only move as quickly as the swing imparts upon it. This scenario illustrates the principle that each observer's perspective is valid, with neither being incorrect. This is the heart of relativity, the understanding that observations can differ based on the observer's frame of reference, yet all interpretations hold validity within their own contexts. Crucially, Galileo posited that despite these differing perceptions of speed, if the sailor were to measure the time it took for the ball to reach the water, both the sailor and the shorebound observer would agree on this duration. The time the ball spins airborne is a function of the distance it travels and the speed it carries a concept at the core of Galilean relativity, underscoring the notion that some aspects of physics remain constant, irrespective of the observer's perspective as the sailor on our moving ship watches the golf ball arc through the air. The dynamics at play illustrate a fundamental principle of relativity. The perceived lower velocity of the ball, according to the sailor, is balanced by the observation of a seemingly shorter distance traveled. This occurs because the ship progresses forward as the ball is in flight. In the world of relativity, the perspective from which observations are made is termed a reference frame. To reconcile observations made from differing reference frames, one must employ what's known as a transformation. Essentially, this is a sophisticated method of adjusting for the variations in observed speed of the golf ball as seen by different observers. For more than two centuries, Galilean transformations provided a satisfactory explanation for such scenarios. However, as we approached the mid-19th century, the framework began to show its age. 
The advent of James Clerk Maxwell's groundbreaking work in 1865 introduced a series of equations that depicted light as an electromagnetic wave. These equations posited that light travels at a constant speed, a concept encapsulated by the symbol. C, from the Latin celeritas, meaning speed, this notion of a universal speed of light presented a direct challenge to Galilean transformations, which are predicated on the idea of the luminiferous ether. This hypothetical substance was thought to permeate all of space, serving as the medium that allowed light waves to travel, much like air enables the propagation of sound waves. If this ether truly existed, it would serve as an absolute reference frame, a universal backdrop where Maxwell's equations and the unwavering speed of light would always apply. In any other frame, the speed of light might appear as variable as the velocity of a golf ball, necessitating adjustments akin to Galilean transformations to reconcile observations. The challenge, however, lay in proving the existence of this elusive ether. This task was undertaken by two American physicists with notably alliterative names, Albert Michelson and Edward Morley in their landmark experiment of 1887. They ingeniously leveraged Earth's orbit around the Sun to search for signs of the ether, employing a device known as the Michelson interferometer. This apparatus functioned as an elaborate optical racetrack. A beam of light, once emitted, was split into two paths by a half-silvered mirror. One beam traveled straight ahead, while its counterpart was diverted at a right angle. Both beams were designed to traverse equal distances. Upon their optical racetrack, Michelson and Morley positioned mirrors to guide the split beams of light back to their point of origin, ensuring both paths were of equal length. If the concept of the ether held true, one beam, the one aligned with Earth's orbital motion and purportedly surfing the ether wind, should have breezed through the course more swiftly, mirroring how the ship's velocity augmented the golf ball's speed. The other beam, moving perpendicular to this aether wind, would lag, arriving more tardily at the finish line. Such a differential would incontrovertibly signal the ether's influence. However, the outcome defied expectation. Michelson and Morley observed that both beams returned simultaneously, negating any discrepancy in velocity that the ether's presence would imply. This result a tie in the race suggested that the speed of light remained constant, unaffected by Earth's motion or the proposed aether. This astonishing discovery, indicating a universal constancy of light's speed across different reference frames, sent shockwaves through the scientific community. The implications of Michelson and Morley's findings were profound, yet it would take time for their full significance to permeate the scientific world. One thinker, the Dutch physicist Hendrik Lorentz, delved deeply into the conundrum. His contributions would eventually earn him a Nobel Prize, with the Nobel Foundation later noting that Lorentz's work was foundational, casting him as a pillar of theoretical physics. His insights would pave the way for a new understanding of space, time, and the very fabric of the universe. Lorentz's contributions to physics elevated him to the status of a luminary, bridging the gap left by his predecessors and reshaping our understanding of the cosmos. His work led to the development of Lorentz transformations, a set of equations that fundamentally redefined the relationship between space and time, challenging centuries-old Galilean principles. To grasp the essence of Lorentz transformations, envision a train gliding smoothly along its tracks, its sides made of clear glass, affording us an unobstructed view inside. At the heart of one carriage, an individual is engaged in the simple act of bouncing a ball straight up and down. From their standpoint within the moving train, the ball's path is a direct vertical line, up from the hand, down to the floor, and back again. However, our perspective from the stationary ground outside the train reveals a different story. As the ball ascends and descends, the train itself continues to advance along the tracks. Consequently, by the time the ball returns to the player's hand, both have moved horizontally along the length of the train. To us, the ball's journey sketches a diagonal path, creating a triangular pattern rather than a simple vertical line. This observation aligns with what we'd expect from Galilean relativity, 
the ball seems to travel further and faster to us because we're also considering the train's forward momentum. But let's introduce a twist. Replace the bouncing ball with light bouncing between two mirrors. In this thought experiment, replacing the bouncing ball with a beam of light might seem to yield a similar outcome at a glance. A passenger on the train witnesses the light beam bounce vertically between two mirrors, while from our stationary vantage point, the beam's path appears to carve out a triangular trajectory, much like the ball. However, the Michelson-Morley experiment throws a wrench into this seemingly straightforward scenario by asserting the constancy of light's speed across all reference frames. We can no longer rationalize that the light travels a shorter distance for the train's passenger due to moving more slowly. This conundrum forces us to entertain a notion so radical it borders on the absurd if the train observer perceives the light covering less distance. It must be because, from their perspective, the light has traversed this distance in less time. In this moving reference frame, less time elapses than in the stationary frame outside the train. This startling implication that time itself dilates or contracts depending on the observer's motion was foundational to Albert Einstein's special theory of relativity. Einstein's theory revolutionizes our understanding of time and space, illustrating that two observers in motion relative to each other will perceive the duration of events differently. They allocate their budget of the universal speed limit, the speed of light, differently between spatial velocity and temporal passage. To an observer, moving at an unimaginable 99.9099,999% the speed of light. A mere second could unfold as nearly two hours for someone stationary. This profound insight into the nature of reality itself challenges our most basic intuitions about the universe, revealing a world where time is not an absolute, but a variable deeply intertwined with the fabric of space itself. On Earth, time unfolds in a familiar cadence, allowing us to experience life's moments sequentially and seemingly synchronously. Yet, through the lens of special relativity, this universal now we share can be dramatically altered. Imagine, if you will, racing through space at a fraction of light speed. For you, aboard your swift vessel, time dilates. A heartbeat could span the duration of an entire football game observed by those back on Earth. This divergence in temporal perception underscores a fundamental principle of relativity. Time is relative, not absolute. The mathematical bridge that spans these vastly different perceptions of time is known as the Lorentz factor. This factor quantifies the discrepancy between time as experienced by a stationary observer and one in motion relative to the speed of light. Yet, the relationship it describes is not linear but exponential, revealing that significant time dilation only becomes apparent as one's velocity approaches the speed of light. At a mere 10% the speed of light, the Lorentz factor nudges to 1.5, a negligible difference, with 100 seconds for the traveler stretching to 100.5 seconds for the stationary observer. But as velocities increase, the effect intensifies dramatically. At 99% the speed of light, the factor surges to over seven, transforming every second into over seven seconds for someone stationary. At 99.9%, .9 the factor escalates to over 23, and with each additional nine in the velocity, 99. 999%, the factor skyrockets, illustrating the profound impact of near light speed travel on time. In the cosmic dance of peculiar existences, the star whale captivates with its relativistic journey through time and space. Yet, there exists another entity within our universe whose existence defies even the strangest imaginations, the photon. This humble particle of light occupies a realm where the concept of time dissolves into nothingness. According to the mathematics of the Lorentz factor, when applied to a photon, a traveler, at the speed of light, the outcome spirals into the realm of the undefined. For photons, there is no journey through time. They leap from point A to point B in what, to them, would seem instantaneous. The very notion of sequential nose is irrelevant in the photon's world, where existence unfolds in a timeless instant. 
This peculiar nature of light brings us to an even more bewildering realization for those of us tethered to the sequential ticking of time. It introduces the possibility that our perceptions of now can become desynchronized. For two observers, the sequence of events, the very ordering of nows, can be a matter of perspective. Consider again our train, moving swiftly along its tracks, evenly positioned between two trees struck simultaneously by lightning. To us, standing still on the platform, the lightning strikes appear concurrent. But what of the passenger aboard the train? Their reality diverges dramatically. Propelled towards one tree and away from the other, they perceive the lightning strike of the approaching tree first. The light from the second strike, from the tree, the train is departing, lags behind, reaching the observer after a delay. This simple yet profound difference in perspective challenges our intuitive understanding of simultaneity, revealing a universe where the flow of time and the sequencing of events are intimately linked to the observer's motion through space. In the intricate ballet of relativity, the degree to which two observers' perceptions of now diverge hinges on their relative velocities and the spatial distance separating the events they observe. For a noticeable desynchronization of a mere second between two nodes, one would need to be hurtling through space at velocities approaching half the speed of light, with the events spaced as far apart as the Earth is from the Moon. Yet, amidst this bewildering realm of shifting realities, a cornerstone principle holds steadfast, the inviolability of causality. In every conceivable reference frame, cause and effect maintain their sacred sequence. If event A precipitates event B, this chronological order remains unchallenged across all perspectives. Observers might quibble over the duration between events, but never the sequence itself. This safeguard against temporal paradoxes, wherein effects precede their causes, is a foundational pillar of Lorentz transformations and special relativity. The universe bars any scenario where causes trail their effects, a peculiar state of affairs that would only become feasible if one could outpace light itself an endeavor that veers into the realm of the impossible. So where does this exploration leave our understanding of now? It appears that our grasp of the present moment is innately subjective, confined to the realms of individual perception and the broader universe alike. In a cosmos governed by relativity, an objective, universal now is a mirage. Yet, this realization doesn't diminish the significance of our temporal experiences. Rather, it highlights the profound complexity of reality. It raises intriguing questions about the nature of time itself and whether a definitive measure of it, beyond the scope of human experience and observation, can ever truly exist. In the grand tapestry of the cosmos, where the march of time weaves through the fabric of existence, there exists a directional flow, an invisible arrow that delineates the passage from past to future. Galactic spirals unfurl into the void, stars are catapulted into the abyss of space, and planets drift away into the cold embrace of the cosmos. Amidst this cosmic ballet, the star whale, an entity of unimaginable power, carves a path of destruction through the heavens leaving behind a trail of celestial ruin that unfolds with the inexorable progression of time itself. This grand spectacle of cosmic upheaval, though chaotic, adheres to a sequence. Cause precedes effect, order emerges from the apparent randomness, and events cascade in a linear progression. But why do these moments unfold in such a precise order, and not as a chaotic amalgamation of disjointed instants? What is the mechanism that ensures the continuity of time's arrow, keeping our nose aligned in an orderly procession? Our quest for understanding takes us to a courtroom in California, circa 1874. Amid the hush of anticipation, the jury foreman stands, delivering a verdict that will ripple through the annals of time, not guilty. This moment, fixed in its sequence, part of the continuum of cause and effect, offers a glimpse into the underlying order that governs our perception of time. It is within this framework of sequential unfolding that we seek answers, venturing into the realms of physics and philosophy to unravel the mystery of time's unyielding arrow, and how, within the vast expanse of the universe, our experiences of now find their place. 
The courtroom air was electric, charged with anticipation. As the verdict was declared, sending a wave of gasps cascading through the assembly like a series of tumbling dominoes. Edward Muybridge, a man whose life had woven through the fabric of the 19th century from England to the United States, had just been acquitted of murder in a case that would ripple through the annals of history. Muybridge, born in England in 1830, sought new horizons in the United States at the age of 20. By 1872, at the age of 42, he wed Flora Stone, a woman half his age, and soon they welcomed a son into the world. Or so it seemed until Newbridge stumbled upon a tangled web of letters and a photograph that suggested the child might not be his. The photograph, bearing the inscription Little Harry, and the letters exchanged between Flora and Major Harry Larkins, ignited a fury within Moybridge that culminated in a fatal confrontation. He shot Larkins through the heart. Initially claiming insanity, Newbridge shifted his defense to justifiable homicide. The jury, persuaded by his argument, or perhaps swayed by the societal norms and legal precedents of the time, acquitted him. In another era, Muybridge might have faced a different fate, but his freedom set the stage for a revolutionary contribution to our understanding of time and motion. A passionate photographer, Muybridge embarked on a groundbreaking venture into chronophotography, laying the groundwork for the motion picture industry and transforming our perception of movement and time. This technique of capturing successive photographs to illustrate the phases of motion peeled back the curtain on the fluidity of time, allowing for the dissection of moments of visual chronicle of the transition from one now to the next. Newbridge's work not only marked the dawn of a new era in visual arts, but also offered a profound insight into the ephemeral nature of time itself challenging us to see beyond the continuous flow to the individual droplets that compose the river of time. Among Edward Muybridge's illustrious portfolio, the horse in motion stands as a monumental achievement, captivating audiences with its dynamic portrayal of equine grace and power. By rapidly cycling through each still image, viewers are treated to the spectacle of a horse and rider in full gallop an illusion of continuous movement that was nothing short of revolutionary. For the first time, Muybridge's sequence unveiled a moment when all four of the horse's hooves are airborne, challenging long-held assumptions about animal locomotion. Chronophotography, Muybridge's pioneering technique, laid the groundwork for the cinematic arts, illustrating how a series of static moments, when sequenced and viewed in rapid succession, could fabricate the sensation of movement. Yet, what we perceive as motion, and consequently the flow of time, is merely an interplay of changes between these captured instants, these discrete nows. Through this lens, the passage of time emerges as an illusion, a construct of our perception rather than a tangible flow from past to future. Newton's laws of motion, while foundational to our understanding of the physical universe, offer no preference for the direction of time a fact that becomes strikingly evident when we apply Newbridge's method to other subjects. Consider a sequence of chronophotographic images depicting a glass shattering as it hits the ground. Played in reverse, the fragments seemingly reassemble and leap upward a spectacle that, while physically improbable, appears just as coherent as the original sequence. This reversibility underscores the neutrality of physical laws to time's arrow inviting us to ponder the true nature of time's flow and the mechanisms that anchor our experience of it in a seemingly unidirectional current. Some films seem to defy the laws of physics in such a way that their reversal would be immediately apparent. Picture one depicting a broken egg magically reassembling or a cold cup of coffee suddenly steaming events so ingrained in our experience that even a child could instinctively arrange their individual frames in the correct order. For these events, time appears irreversible, as if there's an inherent directionality guiding the sequence of nows. The concept of time's arrow was eloquently articulated by the English astronomer Sir Arthur Eddington in his 1928 book, The Nature of the Physical World. He proposed that as we trace this arrow, we encounter increasing randomness in the state of the world, 
indicating a progression toward the future. Conversely, if randomness decreases, the arrow points backward toward the past. This interplay between randomness and the perceived order of events forms the crux of Eddington's theory, raising profound questions about the nature of time itself. But what exactly is the connection between randomness and the temporal flow of events? To understand this, let's embark on a journey down the labyrinthine alleys of ancient Paris. Welcome to Blessovia Science TV, where we take you on an exhilarating journey through the cosmos and unravel the mysteries of science. We are excited to offer you the opportunity to become a valued member of our ever-growing community of cosmic enthusiasts and knowledge seekers. Exclusive access to cosmic content. As a member of Blissovia Science TV, you will gain exclusive access to a treasure trove of cosmic content, including documentaries, interviews with leading scientists, space missions updates, and awe-inspiring visualizations of the universe, live Q, and as sessions with experts. Your membership will grant you the chance to participate in live Q and a sessions with renowned scientists, astronomers, and space explorers. Get your burning questions answered by those who push the boundaries of human knowledge. Embark on a journey that spans the cosmos and join us in unraveling the secrets of the universe. Become a Blasovia Science TV member today and together we will reach for the stars. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and share. Don't forget to leave your comment.